Well, good evening. The time has come again. Been a while since the last video. Um, but we'll fix that now. I have been hard at work with my Emacs, and I have come across a few things that I would like to uh, share with you. Now, in this video, I'm only going to be sharing uh, a handful of those. And in the next one, we'll actually get to talk about completion, which was something that a subscriber or two requested. Specifically for C and C++, as these are known to not be very uh, intuitive and easy to set up. Uh, what you also might notice is uh, I've got a new theme. I got a new theme that I liked, I modified it. I have changed the, how dashboard looks like. We've got a new logo, uh, I'm claiming this logo as my own. It took me long enough in GIMP to do it. I, don't, I can't into like image editing. Let's get into Emacs. First of all, one of the single most amazing packages that I have come across. Let's go to the scratch buffer. Oops. All right. And it's called Mark Multiple. Now, the Mark Multiple package has a function called Mark. Uh, it's, I believe it's Mark Next like this. And what it does is really, really magical, especially if you pair it with other extensions that complement it. So let's let's get this out of the way. Let's install it. I'm going to use package mark multiple. I'm going to ensure it is, that it's installed. And for actually we don't need configurers need to bind it. We are going to I like C um C C and then Q so control C then Q and the function is called mark next. I have it installed already, so it auto completes. Now, what mark next like this does is if you have um, Amy, Sarah, Bob, Amy, uh, Tom, and then another Amy, and you'd like to mark all Amy's, you can mark one, then hit Control C Q, and it's going to mark the next one. This is great because you can do it over and over again to mark. Uh, this occurrence of a word in your buffer. Why is this better than just you know search and replace? Because you have actual control over how many you'd like to mark. Now the reason why this is so good is because you now have multiple cursors to work with. Let's say Amy wasn't called Amy. Let's say it was Deborah or Deborah. You can do that now. Now I really like this extension. I've been using this a lot because I've been actually developing stuff over the past week and I like it especially when coupled with another one. Let me show you another little package. It's called expand region. Now you can probably already guess what it does but I'll show you anyways because I really think that everybody should be using it. It's so so useful. Again we don't need to configure it just bind it. I have it bound to CQ to complement my control C and Q. And uh, the function is called er slash expand region, just like this. What expand region does is whenever you are now let's let's do it in let's do it in actually in here yeah. Let's say your cursor is on the n in bind. If you hit Control Q, it's going to mark bind. Hit it again, it's going to mark the next region. And do it again, it's going to mark everything inside of parentheses. Do it again, and it just highlights the entire block. Why is this good? As I mentioned, uh, if you couple both of those, you're going to have this. Or uh, actually, yeah, this isn't code. I can just do it once. Now you have Amy and Sarah. Because uh, the one thing that I wanted to show here, but I've done it too quickly, so I kind of goofed, is this actually really messes up with the undo tree. So if you are big on like the undo tree and you have like a very elaborate setup going on, uh, it kind of messes up undo tree sometimes. The point is, you actually can just have multiple cursors now at the, um, the spots where you have multiple occurrences of a single word or a code block, a variable name, uh, whatever you might have. So you don't know, maybe Amy is David now. Who knows? It's 2018 now, right? 
Uh, cheap jokes aside, this is one of those things that I really have been using all the time lately. And I really felt like sharing this with you, because those are very, very tiny extensions. Uh, they don't get in your way or anything. But they do work, and they do work very well. And I can imagine these will be useful for when you are, you know, just writing with one big, large file, and you'd like to rename a variable, rename a constant, change a name in a table. You know, these work in all the buffers. You can even use them in thread if you really wanted to. You know, just one of those things. But I wanted to show you more. There is something that we have messed up. Uh, let me search for rainbow. A subscriber pointed this out to me. I never really noticed. I mean, I did notice. It's just that I wasn't sure what I was, what I was supposed to think of this. Uh, uh, the way we have rainbow mode installed and set up, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, and the reason is that rainbow mode is not a global mode. It is a mode that you enable on a per buffer basis. Okay. Uh, that sucks. Well, it doesn't really suck because we can fix fix it very easily. I've actually fixed this in my live configuration on my GitHub. But let me show you something. So if you have rainbow mode here, let's uh, no. As you can see, this well, I I mean it works for me because I have it set up. It wouldn't work for you. That's kind of the it's kind of the thing. Because if we run rainbow mode now, it's disabled. This is what you would have if you are using this snippet of code. It's not going to be enabled. It will be only be enabled for the first buffer that you use when you launch Emacs, which sucks. The way we can fix this is instead of having just, you know, the minor mode being enabled, we need to add a so-called hook. Uh, you like that? I hit AH and then hit tab. Yeah, I'll make a video on this as well. So... I want to make a hook. Now, what is a hook? Uh, let me finish this up real... I should have hit tab. This is what I have in my uh, configuration right now. Now, what a hook does, or this one specifically, whenever uh, this is called a prog mode hook, which is called every time you actually uh, visit a buffer that is for programming. So, any programming language you enter, this hook gets uh, called. And when this hook gets called, well, it doesn't really get called, it's just executed, then this uh, function will be called. So whenever we enter programming mode, let me evaluate this, whenever we enter pro programming mode, rainbow mode will be enabled now. So if you do something like, I don't know, test Lua, if we have a color here, this one actually is going to work, which is great. This is what we wanted to have from the get-go. This is exactly what we needed. Now, this is fixed now, so there is that. So, if you are using rainbow mode, if you just copy-pasted what I said, please fix this, my bad. I did not know that rainbow mode is not global. There's another mode that I really like, that I have added. I believe I have it... Let me check. Yeah, pretty symbols. Um, this is pretty great. I don't know why I like it so much. This doesn't really do much. But uh, it's useful. So what you have now is when I type in, say, lambda, it turns the word into a symbol. When I do or, it turns the word into a symbol. Same for and, same for like uh, this. It makes the code a little bit nicer. And all you have to do is, you know, this. Just use package, pretty mode, and then call it globally. Or you can add a hook. If you would like to have it enabled only for programming and not have it enabled for, I don't know, like org mode or your ERC buffers, instead of calling uh, global pretty mode, you can also do, uh, you know, just call prod mode, a uh, prog mode hook. What is, what did I do now? Uh, just call pretty mode just like this instead of you know instead of having this enabled pretty much i mean again it's tiny it's not groundbreaking but it is what did i 
No, there it is. Now I hit insert. Oops. So you can do either enable it globally like I do or just add a hook for programming. Whatever works for you. Maybe you don't even write code. Maybe you're a mathematician. It actually substitutes lots of math math mathematical symbols. The next or and last thing for this video. You might have noticed when I um, hit tab, everything here is indented. But it's not really indented. It's only indented visually, so the file itself is not changed, but it, there is an actual hier hierarchy, or whatever you spell that. And that's pretty neat. Now there is something that I found out how to do it. It's called org indent mode, and you can set it up really easily. I think it really improves the readability of these, um, you know, of org files, especially if they are large and you have a lot of sub headings and so on and so forth. So let's add that. I have it added actually, just I haven't bothered adding it to this very configuration. And what you have to do is, again, set up a hook. But this time, instead of a programming mode, you need to set up a hook for org mode hook. Uh, nothing, nothing easier than this. All you need to do is called org mode hook. Then the function is called org and then Just like this. Save it. That's all there is to it. Reload your file. You'll have nice indentation if you're in your um, in your org mode files, which is great. I really like it. So yeah, just a quick video for now. Uh, there will be more. There will be more. I'm probably going to upload this one and the other ones at the very same time. Uh, I ran into a few issues unrelated to YouTube, but now I'm back and as good as ever. Um, the next subjects that we are going to be talking about are company mode. So we will be setting up completion, as already mentioned. We will be looking at YAS snippets. So, you know, this thing right here, so I can do like this. It's just going to work. And it's especially rad because you can have like mirror... What? You can have like mirroring fields. So let me, let me make a Lua document here. If I do uh, require can do this, only type in the library once and have it be in there twice. Just like that. It's really, really easy to set up. You can have custom snippets, which I do, and it's on in my repository in my configuration. But this one is an actual custom snippet. So yeah, we'll be taking a look at snippets. We will be taking a look at completion. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, as these two are actual, you know, my subscribers ask me to make videos on those. If you have something, just let me know, because I am I'm probably going to make a video on it. Thank you for watching, I hope your rainbow mode is fixed now and you can edit multiple occurrences of a string and a buffer now. Very, very useful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.